All right, welcome back to another episode of CMA Podcast on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcast. How is everybody doing? I am joined here today with Sarah Jeffries. Sarah, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Thanks Very good. for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. So, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Sarah is the wife of Tony Jeffries at Box and Burn in California. I uh, reached out to Tony. I've been put in the direction of Sarah and I looked at her content on social media and I thought I have to talk to this girl. Um, so it's a pleasure to have you here. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Cool. Yeah. So I'm Tony's wife behind him. Yeah. Like you said, I'm a um, registered nurse and I work in the ER. So cool. Interesting few years. What led you to that? What was the uh, what was the decision making to that? Because like you're like, are, are you are you you have a job in a hospital or a, or a practice, or are you going more towards the social media aspect of this? Well, I've been a nurse. I'll start from the beginning. I've been a nurse for a, oh, since two thousand and seven. I qualified back in England and went straight to the emergency room, but they call it accident and emergency yeah. back home, and. Um, yeah, then when we moved to LA, I transferred my license and um, yeah, went straight to the emergency room in Los Angeles and went from there. So working full time and then, you know, getting some extra degrees. And then I was um, the educator in the emergency room. So educating all of the nurses and then the pandemic hit and yeah, just being in lockdown. Um, it was my husband's idea to do a YouTube channel. Um, you know, he's got a YouTube channel doing really well with that. And he said, you know, you know some stuff. Do you, do you want to do a YouTube channel? It's like, all right. Yeah, I know some stuff. Let's let's have a go. Yeah. Excellent. And like you, you mentioned the location. The, the accents in California must be a topic for discussion every day. I love the accents, but it's such a strong accent you guys have. Oh, yeah. It's, Tony's is even stronger if you've listened to his uh, YouTube channel. Um, so then when people ask, oh, where are you from? Like, oh, we're from the same place. But mine, I've had to change mine to be a little bit more professional <laughs> sounding. And, and he's in a boxing gym, you know, just doing him. So yeah, it's it's a fun one. That's fantastic. And like <laughs> when, when when I I first saw Tony on um it was uh, Brendan Schaub's podcast. Uh, the, back then it was the Big Brown Breakdown. They were talking about Connor versus Floyd. Uh, it was a couple of weeks before that actually happened and I'm like, you know, I'm Irish, but like I, I'm used to a more eclectic like accent. Everyone here in Switzerland is kind of talking very very clearly and making sure that everybody can understand and with the podcast that i watch i watch everything in the u.s like every all the podcasters that i watch from the u.s and then this british boy comes on and i'm like this is fantastic i'm like i want to go to the pub and one of the guys that's really yeah cool. see that's it like especially santa monica it's a small little city in la that's where we used to live and um it's funny when you mention uh, connor on the side of the the irish bar that was at the end of our street um, was a huge mural of Conor McGregor on the side. So it's just like that. It's You don't really think about it when you're in Santa Monica because there's lots of different accents floating around. So, yeah, it's just fun and you get get together with everybody and talk about what's going on. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. But you must be unique in Switzerland <laughs> with your accent. Let me tell you, when Those I... Are a little bit of a... When I, when I arrived and I made like a few Skype calls to my brother and I was in a, a, like a, a pub with people I just met like a couple of weeks previous uh, and I talk freely to my brother the way I talk normally and they were like, dude, is that even English? What, 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 what's this language you're speaking? Oh, 100%. My inflection is up and down. I'm just like, I'm speed speaking and I've had to slow it way down to the point where people are talking about my American accent. I'm like, I'm just trying to talk so people can understand me. So accents are hilarious exactly. here. I work with a, um, a scouser nurse in the ER, well, used to, um, and she her accent so strong she lived here for years and her husband's irish and um they've got three girls but they all sound 
completely American, but when she's talking, she's talking so fast and she's saying, mm, and ahs. And then the nurses will go, Sarah, what did she say? I went, oh, she's all right. She's just talking to herself. Just carry on. <laughs> I love it. Because our, our taste of the Scouser accent was from uh, the Fast Show. Do you remember the Fast Show when you were younger? Yeah. All right, all right. Calm down, calm down. Yes. Yeah, we're just nonstop listening to that. So that was our taste of the Scouser accent. So I can't imagine what that's like in the U.S. Oh, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it makes it interesting. And yeah, everybody just has a laugh with Tony and, and me. It's Excellent. Good. That's hilarious, man. I love it's good it. Good crack. As good crack. Say. There you go. Now you're talking. <laughs> um, I want to get to your content on social media because uh, I, I try and avoid the, the, the COVID conversations because everyone is, is, is either this side or this side. And for some strange reason, we all hate each other now in the world. You're either with us or against us and all that nonsense. Um, but what's interesting is the, the huge conversation is, oh, I do my own research, bro, and you're not trusting doctors or science. Your content is very thought provoking um, because at the end of your videos, you kind of say, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this, which encourages people to do their own research and to Google and to use the tools that we have nowadays with our technology. Um, yeah. You should be super proud of that because that's what everybody needs oh, to you. think for themselves, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's so interesting to me as well. And I genuinely want to see what people write. And I want, I'm interested to hear what people are thinking because, you know, that I think that now we're missing that human connection, like to actually sit and speak to somebody about what you think. Like we used to sit in the pub and do that. Well, now you can't do that as much. So it's just interesting to see what people are thinking and, you know, what they're reading. And are they reading actual facts or are they just literally pulling it off Google? And they're not even asking the right questions. So I really do want to see what people write. Um, but yeah, I just, I went into the world of TikTok. I know. Fantastic. <laughs> Tony's idea, not mine. But you're, no, it's it's good. It's a, It's all fun. And I posted a video about, we're not going to talk about what the video was, but the video got taken down for community guidelines. Oh, wow. I said, whoa, that's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> because it causes people to probably think for themselves, yeah. right? And yeah, yeah, yeah standard. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's interesting to hear what people are, people are thinking. Yeah, because, you know, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, like I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a, I never studied medicine but I'm an intelligent guy, right? And if, if I've got a cold or a flu or hay fever or whatever, first thing I'm going to do is in, in a moment where I'm not thinking, I'm going to go, what, what do I need to do here? Stay warm, drink cold drinks, drink hot drinks. I'm going to Google and, and, and see what my options are, right? Yeah. Um, but for the big things, abdominal pain, like... Uh, headaches like as as boxers we we get headaches sometimes they're from uh -huh. sparring sometimes you just didn't drink enough water um mm -hmm. but like use i think people need to start using their head a bit more not freak out at the small things and and Absolutely. just brush big things under the carpet you know yeah and that was one of the things that you know why we did start at the youtube was just you know, I have all of this information from years of working in the ER and it just thought it would be a good idea to share it. Like, you know, just use your common sense, which I think common sense is a little bit, you know, far and few between, far and few between at the minute. Yeah. <laughs> um, we don't say that so over yeah, here just, anymore in Europe. We, we drop the common. Right. Yeah. I just, so it's just basic, basic knowledge, but then forgetting the fact that I've got a lot of years behind the desk as a triage nurse when somebody comes in and they have abdominal pain or they have a headache and you know I, I look at them first and ask them a few questions so I just thought you know putting that knowledge into some videos and just helping people deciphering through the amount of information that's out there which is really confusing yeah for a lot of people it's so strange I just see the world crumbling right now because like I'll give you two examples. As as someone with kids, you're probably no stranger to this, and I'm not going. I'm going to spare you all the details. When there's kids involved, stomach flu happens pretty much goddamn every year, right? 
Yeah, yeah. And 100%. you kind of figure out after your first horrific experience of when there's like going around the area where the kids are at home, whatever the case may be, you start to figure out how to treat it at home to get it done quickly. Um, and, and that's what kind of I learned over the last four years. It's just kind of like, okay, uh, my common sense tells me that my kids are sick. I'm going to get sick. This is what we need to get into our system. This is how we need to recover fast. And I'm not a right. doctor, right? Right. Um, I had like a little bump in the front of my stomach about a year ago. And, mm -hmm. you know, we immediately in the middle of the night go to Google and, you know, <laughs> we don't necessarily see that it's a cyst or just a bump or something. We automatically see cancer, lymphoma, uh, leukemia, and we freak out, right? Yeah. Yep. Next day I did a, like, I got a doctor's appointment and they checked me out and I was absolutely fine. But people would leave that go nowadays and not use their brain and say, hey, maybe I need to talk to a doctor about this. If I'm not insured, if I'm insured, the cost could be your life. Go check yourself out via a doctor. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's it. Like, just, you know, just like take a second before you Google it. And say it's the first thing, 100% you Google say, I've got a cut finger and it's going to say you've got cancer. Like <laughs> the worst thing you can do is go on Google and so many times I hear that work, but Google said this, like I've just done all the blood tests and a CAT scan and a CT scan, you know, you're all right. I know what Google said, don't yep. Google anymore. You know, you're all right, just calm yourself down. Yeah. Yeah, it's madness. But I think you're now in, in a very strong position where you can overstep all of that. And if they don't go to Google and they go to YouTube or wh whatever platform you want them to mainly go to, where you your advice will be there. And I think I, I, I prefer to trust somebody who's like, because Google could be anything. Like you look on any person's Wikipedia and it's, it's done by the fans for the vast majority of cases. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know. Don't believe what you read on Google. Google says Tony's a millionaire. So says, have you read this? It says you're a millionaire? Are you hiding some money from me? <laughs> it, like, you know, it's just a prime example. Like, don't believe it. You know, I've done... I've got a bachelor's and a master's and you have to do a paper at the end and you can't just write, I got this source from google.com. It has to be .net or .gov or .org. Those are like reputable websites, you know, like the CDC or the WHO. Like they've, you know, been peer reviewed and there's research done. And a lot of people don't know that unless they've actually been to school and done a research paper themselves. Yeah. So it's important like to know. Very true. And I, I'm in a position as well where I own a gym, I'm a, I'm a coach. And if someone comes to me and asks advice, I got to throw my hands up because I, I can't give them any like reputable advice. Like I, I yeah. got I got a headache from sparring. I'm not going to say, did you drink water today? Because it may not be related to anything to do with the boxing gym. You may have some issues that I'm not qualified to check. Um, right. So, you know, I, I go to a doctor. I, I have to throw my hands up and say, sorry. And that you bring up a good point. Like a lot of people don't want to say that they don't know. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with holding your hand up and saying, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's wrong with you. You know, the like culture right now is you, everybody knows it all and everybody's a doctor and everybody knows what's going on and everybody's got an opinion but there's a difference between an opinion and actually knowing what you're talking about which is you know like you said it's great that you do that that you hold your hands up and say i don't know you need to go and talk to somebody who does know about it very true yeah. because mm -hmm. I, i've left the gym uh, quite a few times in in two specific years 2011 and 2012 that's when i was at my most active for fighting um mm -hmm. you know the wild west of boxing and mma back then where it was fight night every time you set foot in the gym um yep. so i was getting hit quite hard five rounds sparring um i don't know do you know what shark tank is yeah so <laughs> shark tank twice a week um just getting absolutely murdered sore joints elbows shoulders ridiculous beat up ribs like i kind of knew that the injuries were sustained from the gym but if someone nowadays who's not training that hard comes to me and says i've got these awful migraine type headaches um 
uh, I can't say that it's from this hard sparring that you're not doing and that you may have other problems. And as you say, I, I have to say, I don't know. Yeah. Which, which I'm very yeah. comfortable in saying. Yeah. And that's hard for a lot of people to say. Yeah. But to you, say that they don't know. Because you got to look at hands it. Up. Hold your exactly holding your hands up, and because at the end of the day, there could be a lawsuit, and I could be like, I gave medical advice where I shouldn't have, and now this person's in a like extreme case in a wheelchair, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. But it's a, it's a strange situation. I wanted yeah. I wanted to ask you one question about something I saw on your uh, content. Boxing improves uh, bone mineral density. That sounds fantastic. I don't know what it is. What is that? Well, that's just exercising in general, you know, like being active and, you know, using your joints and using your muscles to, you know, build up your strength. You know, that's one of the things that, you you know, you that's one of the things that you tell a patient when you, you know, they're being discharged. It's just, you know, eat healthy, stay hydrated, exercise regularly, because that's going to help keep your body strong, you know, keep your muscles moving, keep your bones strong. Um, That's basically what it is. It's just moving around and, and getting your body to use your muscles and keep your bones moving. Right. Yeah. So it sounds really fancy, but that's what it is. It's just about moving and exercising. Yeah. Cause I deliberately didn't Google it. So that I could ask you and it'd it be an organic answer to me rather than me just go, okay, it's this. Let's see what she says. But yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. It just sounds, it sounds super like yeah. technical. And that's the thing that like you can Google it and somebody will say, no, but no, it's not. I'm like, but that's what I would tell my patients. And I've got a license to discharge somebody, you know, to give them medical advice and be their advocate. But you can Google it and it'll say a million different things. Um, yeah. Yeah, and that's the difference. Yeah. yeah, and another thing that your your um, your page says is uh, I I took it from boxing. You said that boxing uh, release uh, uh, relieves stress. Um, mm-hmm. I can absolutely advocate for this because a lot of you know nowadays work life, family life, trying to manage fifty different things in one hour every day. I go boxing. And I don't even need to get punched in the face or punch someone in the face. If I'm hitting pads or just moving around or just with my peers, my my clients, Mm -hmm. whatever, I'm at my least stressed at that point, that point of the day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. Do you do you box chemical? I do. Yeah, I used to a lot more when we first moved here. I mean, um, before we moved to L.A., I wasn't you know, the best at exercising, but we moved here together and Tony's getting the boxing gyms up and running and, um, you know, building a community and people exercising and doing boxing for a workout. I said, oh, this is pretty good, this. I like this. Like doing this exercising and working out and, you know, you're getting that chemical release of the endorphins going. It's it's 100% the best thing you you can do for stress is go and exercise and get your heart rate up. Yeah. So like, you know, boxing, one of those things that I've done, you know, boxing for fitness, not for fighting. Um, yeah. Yeah. How long have you uh, been in the fight game? I started pretty late. I, uh, I I was a fan of like fighting. Like I knew boxing all my life. I, my right. dad, my dad owned a bar and we used to like, I remember getting up while they had like the pay-per-views back in the 90s or whatever. Yeah, but I was very Vegas. young. Vegas back in the day. Yeah. Um, but when I was like 2021, 20, I kind of understood what UFC was and cage fighting. And around, let's say I was 25, 26, I started doing jujitsu. And then I went and joined another gym with my same jujitsu coach who, uh, it was an MMA gym. And then I saw the boxing guy sparring and I'm like, I want to do that. That looks really fucking cool. So <laughs> I just decided to get, I didn't even do a boxing class. I just put on a pair of gloves and went, how do you do this? So I just did sparring. I didn't learn how to box. I just learned how to defend mm-hmm. myself for the first three months. Yeah. Um, but like from 26 to 28, 28 and a half, I was uh, pretty active, like fighting at least once a month, like whether it was MMA, jiu-jitsu or boxing. And then Mm -hmm. 2012, I moved to Switzerland and I trained, but I periodically fought. I only fought twice since I moved here. 
Um, yeah. But then back in December, January of uh, earlier in the year, um, I got involved at the gym I'm in now, City Martial Arts. So I'm a part owner and head coach and love nice. every minute of it. Yeah, it's it the is. best. It's it really is. good, like building that community and seeing, like you see, um, you know, people come in that are, you know, a little bit nervous and maybe feeling like anxious and then they just get like that such a good feeling from working out like i felt that personally it's just amazing yeah. like to see and then you know sadly gyms did your gym get closed down too yeah yeah what happened was um first they put a cap on the amount of people per square meter Right. And, you know, that's not good for business at all anyway, because you can't advertise your gym. You can't satisfy your current members. Um, so what we actually did, I don't know. Um, I, my guys are sick of me, sick of me telling this story, but I'll tell it again because <laughs> you don't know the story. So I'm all right with I that. Don't. Skip forward five minutes, guys. Um, so what happened is we had noise complaints at the gym anyway, prior to lockdowns. And we basically were told we got to keep it down and lockdowns hit. We basically were basically telling the landlord, listen, we got to make up for last time. There's going to be more classes. There's going to be longer classes. There's going to be kids at the weekends. We're going to have, this place is going to be booming once this pandemic is done. Um, but we'd like to leave. We'd like to respectfully get out of the contract. Mm -hmm. So they let us out of the contract. The, there's apartments upstairs and they were really upset at the noise, the music, the bags, right. the pads. You know, yeah, because it's not a, you know, it's not a library. We're pretty loud. It's not yoga. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so we got out and I said to the guys, look, here's what we're going to do. Uh, boxing is my passion. I will do it if I never make another penny off this sport ever. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. Switzerland has beautiful uh, spring and beautiful summer and a beautiful autumn too, or fall as you guys call it, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll do classes outside and I'll do it for free. So it doesn't affect your contracts. All contracts are frozen and we will just do uh, outside training. Um, anyone is welcome to come, old members, current members, new people. Uh, mm -hmm. Numbers are down because people don't want to train outside because I think they may be self-conscious. People are looking at them and I completely understand that. Yeah. I just hit the mic. Um, I completely understand that. I really do. Um, but that's what we're doing now. We're looking for a new space um, with a landlord nice. that's willing to be flexible with us and have yeah. an agreement in place on the lease. Um, yeah. You know, I, I know the story about the one of the box and burn gyms, like just not not the case, no flexibility. Yeah, it's funny that you're, you know, you're doing it outside. That's how box and burn started. It was really? on the bluffs at Santa Monica. Um, wow. Where the pier is, there's like um, a cliff and at the top of that, it's called Palisades Park. People call it the bluffs. Um, and at the time, um, there wasn't anybody doing this and they took the classes, um, you know, had a little bit of a following of people and they took it to the bluffs and they started just doing mitts with people and doing the class format. And it was a don donation only at the time. Um, and it got so popular that that's when they found the first spot, which is now Santa Monica, um, the Lincoln location. Um, wow. but it's funny that you mentioned the noise disturbance because the Santa Monica residents who live opposite the bluffs, they complained also about the mitt work. And now you can't train in a park or the bluffs unless you have a license because of the noise disturbance that wow. Box and Burn made. <laughs> that's incredible. But that's a, yeah. such a success story. So it, there wasn't even a concept. It was just Tony, whoever else he had with him and pads Yeah, they outside. used to do it in a, um, in a different gym. And then um, he took, he got on well with his business partner, Kevin, who's, you know, in boxing training. And uh, he's from Kentucky. And they took it to the bluffs. They left that gym and then took it to the bluffs. And yeah, the rest is history. That's amazing. So, I didn't know that. That's such guy. a success story. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So but, cool. But yeah, that, that's what we're planning on doing now. We're going to stay outside. We've, we've anticipated the lack of flexibility from landlords. And we have found a little location that has a cover in case of rain or and most definitely snow. 
yeah. because it does get to like minus 10 here in the winter time. Wow. And like two, three solid weeks of snow. Um, yeah. So I said to the guys, listen, you know, this will toughen you up. This will get you the 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 blood pumping. It'll get you out of the house. It This is a an amazing way to train. I've trained outside. I've trained in cold. Right. Wet Rocky weather. didn't train in a gym all the time. He's running go. up and down and flipping tires. There you go. Chasing chickens. It's good to be outside. You know, exactly. Good to get that fresh air. Exactly. Yeah. I, I want to like a really I just want it to be fun. But I want people mm -hmm. to just come and enjoy it, like put your hood up, put the gloves on and, and just get mm -hmm. working, you know. And at the end of it all, in five, six months, if we get a new space, we can talk about this as part of our story. Like, yeah, just like yeah. probably Tony does about the, what did you call it? The, the roughens? The, the, the bluffs. The bluffs, sorry. Yeah, yeah, the bluffs at Santa Monica. So are you, are you boxing now again or are you just, is it general fitness in the gym? fitness um although tony did make me do a workout video in his youtube studio that's online <laughs> right now um yeah he um it, we don't have they don't have a gym on um in the valley that's it's in the west side so it's a bit difficult with the kid dropping the kids off at school and work and everything um so i have a good friend um kez christie she's a trainer at the gym and she'll come and make me do some mitt work in the garden and do some little circuits so yeah get some get some work in excellent and obviously the california weather too it's not so harsh in this in the the winter time you got some warm summers but yeah we can't complain it's yeah. funny we actually tell the girls to close the doors to keep the heat out because it gets really hot in the valley yeah. so we're gonna <laughs> tell them the opposite way around oh man yeah i, I don't know i couldn't survive in just constant heat like that like we get some pretty goddamn warm summers here too but it's like two weeks of like plus 30 degrees here which is what yeah 120 or is it 100 120 yeah it gets to, it gets like 101 degrees that's like fahrenheit mm. over here but it's only for like a month where it's really bad and then the rest of the time it's it's good no complaints there you go I just yeah. I, I look forward to the regularity here of like yeah it's cold during the winter time guaranteed snow for skiing uh, beautiful spring times Amazing. summer is gorgeous I live in Lucerne we got the lake the mountains it's just wonderful um, wow. now it's like cooling down and then like the winters the inevitable cold of winter ahead you know perfect yeah perfect so what are your what are your future plans with uh with this content that you're putting on it's youtube and instagram and, and you said you're touching in uh in, in tiktok as well yeah at the i mean the aim is just to put out some content there to help people that's what it's all about you know just being you know being there to put out some videos where it'll give people some quick tips on how to help you know everyday everyday illnesses what everybody will go through you know like um i just did a video on how to get rid of a cold saw um i did some videos on um stds you know for you know those teenagers out there who might not want to ask the mom or go to the doctor and why why is it burning when i'm in the bathroom you know just general stuff like that yeah which i think is really important you know just to put some good information out there that is going to help, help yeah people from a reputable yeah. source like you as opposed to mm -hmm. a google search that may not be correct or from the medical journal of what, what would you call it, the u.s medical journal or I don't know what, yeah. what parameters you guys go by yeah. over there, but yeah, something reputable, something that someone can look at and go, okay, she knows what she's talking about. It seems to be this. I think I need to go to a doctor or this is probably nothing. Wait it out for a week and live your life. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. You know, just maybe take a little bit of the stress away of trying to search for God knows what and you end up, oh, it says I've got cancer again. You know, like just just simple place to find some good information that's all that's all i'm trying to do and it's just you know it's fun and 
yeah i'm enjoying it Excellent. so far we'll see where it goes super well i do wish you the very very best of luck with it I, i'm a fan immediately having just found out who you were this week so there you go thank you amazing thank you uh, so tell us where you are your um what's your social media where you want people to go you want them to go to instagram um youtube so yeah it's nurse it's nurse sarah and uh yeah sarah jeffries um I think it's nurse nurse Sarah J. You look at that actually. I'll put it up here anyway, um, so it'll it'll be. I'll put it. It'll screenshot up. All right, nice one. Excellent. Yeah, nurse Sarah. That's it. Nurse Sarah and TikTok. You don't want to promote that just yet, right? Oh no, that's just for fun. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> I love it. There's so many different. There's so many different social media avenues. It's so hard yeah. to keep track of it. Yeah. But yeah, uh, YouTube's the main one. Perfect. Yeah. I yeah uh, we I set up a TikTok about six months ago, but I said you know what I'm gonna wait. Um, like the 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 stuff that I, the ideas that I'm pulling from everywhere online, Mr. Jeffries is a classic example of that. Um, I I want that content to be just in the gym. I don't want this to be in my apartment or outside or whatever. It just needs to be in the right. gym in a clean spot with the ring, the cage, the logo boxing gloves on music on and that's that's just my vision for tiktok yeah yeah that's a good tip so yeah he's an expert at all that stuff he's a beast you you got you got a, a an unbelievable mentor there on your right hand side so i've i've nothing but the utmost confidence that you're going to be excelling with numbers yeah i wish somebody would have a it would be good to have a camera that shows the whole screen because he's like right at the side like watching us like don't say that don't say that like you're being mean it's i'm new to this yeah. just be nice just say yeah. go over there let me let me do my thing and then we'll critique yeah, it leave after. me alone i know what i'm talking about go away excellent excellent any final words mm -hmm. for my my clients my guys who who have either uh issues with injury or if they've got headaches or if they've got anxiety or something to do with someone in your position that can help Yes, I will say one thing. It's that, you know, um, especially fighters, you know, you have this tough persona and you don't want to let anybody in. It's okay to say that you're not feeling okay. Especially one of the things that we've learned in the last couple of years going through what we've gone through is don't be afraid to say, like, I'm not feeling okay. Like, you got to take care of your brain the way you would take care of an injured muscle like you would in a fight camp. You know, it's the same, it's it's an organ. And if you don't get, take care of it, it'll come back and bite you. So that's one thing I would just say. Excellent. Amazing last words. Sarah, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much for coming on. You are, of course, welcome on any other time. Um, and, and I wish you. you the very best of luck with your with your content. Thanks for having us. It was good. Excellent. Yeah, thank you. I enjoyed it. Awesome. Guys, thank you very much for listening. Uh, if if you like me, if you think I'm amazing, subscribe, hit the subscribe button. You will help the algorithm if you like, if you dislike, if you put a comment and say, Dave, grow your hair. You look like a skateboarder um, on. Uh, what am I? I'm trying to sound cool here. I apologize. Um, Spotify, Apple podcast, rate and review. Give me five stars and tell me I'm fantastic. That's all I ask. Uh, once again, thank you very much for joining me, Sarah. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Rock and take care, guys.